Hey guys, so today's move is another one of those that has been on the back burner for me for actually quite some time. Um, it is taking the concept of an introversion and applying it rather than a split time same direction place to a split time opposites place. And it results essentially in a four beat split opposites thread the needle, which is pretty badass. Most of us learn how to do thread the needle very, very early on in our poi careers. And of course, in learning thread the needle, a lot of us then go on to the four beat thread the needle, which is great prep for then learning how to do the thread the needle in split opposites. Because for reasons that I'm still not entirely sure, the split opposites thread the needle uses almost the exact same skill set as the four beat thread the needle in the same time, right? Now, if we're going to take our split time opposites thread the needle and stick it into a four beat kind of place, it means that we need to, well, I'm sure there are going to be some people who are going to point out other ways to do it to me, but the only way I'm aware of doing it is to include an inversion as such, right? So here's the step by step on how it's done. Um, one thing that'll help out a lot, practice doing your isolations and split opposites, because as you're going through this, this to me more than anything else feels like you're keeping almost a constant uh, isolation going in split opposites. Um, so how do you actually go through it? Um, I usually start with my dominant hand, so my right hand, and it is going to have the poi head go over my left arm, and as my right arm makes contact with my left arm, my right side poi then is going to keep rotating and it's going to pop up through that negative space hole. And it's going to create a moment when my hands and poi are completely crossed over. If somebody were to grab each of my poi heads right now, I would be completely tied up as though I were in like a straight jacket. Uh, you could also think of this as just being a square knot, right? Now, interesting things about the directions that the poi are going here. The right hand poi should still be going its original direction, so for me that was uh, counterclockwise. Now the left hand poi is going to still be rotating uh, clockwise, which means that the direction it wants to go is inward towards your left arm and then back out, right? Like such. So, technically speaking, the poise should be going the right direction to automatically kind of free themselves from this little trap that we've created for them. It's just a matter of giving them the space to do so and getting your arms out of the way as you perform it, right? The latter thing is one of the harder parts. The other hard part, of course, is keeping your timing and direction consistent as you're going through it, because otherwise you tend to tangle up real badly. Once you've learned uh, dominant arm going through, it's time to learn non-dominant arm going through. Same story. Left arm goes over, makes content with the, uh, contact with the right arm, and you're then going to get your left hand poi to come up through your arms. If uh, you happen to be good at negative space, this will definitely be a place where that'll help. You create the knot, this time with your right hand on top instead of your left hand. Your left hand poi is going to continue rotating in, uh, this to me seems like clockwise, and your right hand poi is now going to pop towards your right arm, and it should just be able to pop straight up and out, right? The, the really, really crucial thing that I missed the first few times I learned this is that you have to get the leading hand back out as soon as possible. It can't just hang out back there because you'll get all kinds of tangles. It feels a lot sketchier to get it to the outside quicker, but by getting out of the way, it makes it possible for the following arm to do its bit of business. Once you have both, you can do them in succession, of course and create your four beats, split opposites, thread the needle, which looks pretty cool in and of itself. But then you can uh, add a little bit of absurdity to it by, say, adding in a third order motion, perhaps, right? Who would do such a thing? Well, why not, after all? So all I'm doing here is every time the, uh, the poi are coming together in that vertical kind of place in uh, Zan's Diamond, I'm performing my uh, split opposites inversion to get them through that position and then right back out, right? Huzzah! Cool. So essentially any point in which you have the, the poi coming together, like you could do it out of a, uh, an in-spin flower too for that matter, I'm sure. Look for moments like these. See if you can get the inversion in there and uh, add a little bit of uh, spice to them, yeah? Anywho, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great week. Peace.